Analytical chemists and forensic scientists carry out chemical tests to identify unknown substances. These may be taken from areas under investigation, such as sewers or a crime scene, and taken back to the lab for analysis. Production chemists may also carry out random chemical tests as part of the quality control process when manufacturing substances. I'm going to carry out three short experiments that can be used to identify ions. Remember, when an atom or molecule loses negatively charged electrons, the ion is positive. When an atom or molecule gains negatively charged electrons, the ion is negative. Once you know these tests, you will have a toolkit to help you identify an unknown substance in a laboratory. The first experiment is a flame test used to identify metal ions. We're going to see some bright colors here, so this is visually exciting. The second test uses sodium hydroxide to identify positive ions. And finally, we'll do a group of experiments to identify negative ions, including carbonates, sulfates, and halides. So let's start with flame tests. Each metal ion shows a different flame color. So if we know the flame color of each metal ion, we can use that knowledge to identify an unknown ion. Today's practical is all about identifying these colors. So we have the salt solutions containing the metal ions in labeled bottles. There are several different ways to carry out a flame test. Today, I'm going to be using the wooden splint method, but you could use a nichrome wire. Both methods work well. The wooden splints have been soaked in distilled water for 24 hours before this experiment. That's critical. Never do this experiment with a dry splint. Okay, eye protection on. I've dimmed the lights and I'm going to change the Bunsen burner to the roaring blue flame so that we can see the brilliant colors more clearly. I'm going to start by testing the splint dipped in distilled water. This is so we can see what flame color we get when there is no metal iron present. I'm going to gently hold the splint over the Bunsen flame. And I can't see any flame color here. So let's start the flame tests. I'm going to start with lithium. Again, I'm going to hold the splint gently over the Bunsen burner flame and observe the color. Can you see the red flame color? We call this crimson and you'll see why in a minute. Next, I'm going to test the potassium ions. This is the hardest one to see. You may be able to see a lilac flame. Now I'm going to test the calcium ions. Again, we can see a red color, but this time it's an orange red. This is why we need to be very particular when describing the flame color of lithium and calcium. Now I'm going to be testing the copper ions. Wow, look at that lovely green color. Finally, I will test the sodium ions. You can see a very bright yellow orange flame. Let's look at those flame colors one more time. Now we move on to the sodium hydroxide test. This is the test for positive ions in a solution. I'm going to be doing this test on a micro scale level. However, the same experiment can be done on a larger scale using standard test tubes. In this experiment, the results table is also where the experiment takes place. First of all, I'm going to put my goggles on. Now I'm going to add two drops of sodium hydroxide to each box in the results table. 
Stay neat so that you don't get the results muddled. Before we add the positive ion solutions, think about which ions are present in the sodium hydroxide solution. Remember that in aqueous solutions, water molecules are also present, as well as the substance that is dissolved in it. Now we're going to add two drops of each positive ion solution onto the sodium hydroxide solution. Observe carefully and write down what you see. I'm going to start with iron two positive ions. I can see that a reaction has happened and a green precipitate has formed. Consider the ions present in both solutions. An insoluble metal hydroxide has been formed. This green precipitate is iron hydroxide. We can record our observation in a results table. I'm now going to work my way through the positive iron solutions. As you work, try to think about what is happening in each reaction. I'm going to start with iron 3 solution. Iron 3 is different to iron 2 because iron 3 has lost 3 electrons instead of 2 electrons. Just be careful as you are dropping the drops onto the paper that you don't spill any. An advantage of this microscale experiment is that it provides another way to capture the results before I move on. It is easy to knock the paper, so I would suggest you take a photo on your phone and draw up the results table from the photo. Next, I'm going to add excess sodium hydroxide to all of the solutions and observe carefully what happens. When excess sodium hydroxide is added to a sample of aluminium hydroxide, it dissolves to give a sample of sodium aluminate. This provides us with a positive test for aluminium. You may want to take another photo of your results here, but really you just need to remember that this is the positive test for aluminium. Here is the equation for the reaction. In this section, we're going to carry out chemical tests for carbonate ions, sulfate ions, and halide ions. These are all negative ions. During the reactions, it's important that you make careful observations and record your results in a results table so that you know what the positive result looks like. First of all, I need to put my eye protection on. I'm going to show you the test for carbonate ions first. I'm going to add lime water to a clean test tube. You may remember what lime water tests for, and this might give you a clue about what's going to happen next. Now I'm going to add hydrochloric acid to my solutions, and here I have my solutions of sodium carbonate, which contain a carbonate ion. I'm going to add the acid to the first test tube. Observe what happens. You can see bubbles of a gas forming. I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to collect the gas with a pipette. And I'm going to bubble the gas through the lime water. You should be able to see that the lime water has turned cloudy. You might remember that this is the gas test for carbon dioxide. So the positive test for carbonate ions is that carbon dioxide will be produced when acid is added. You can confirm that the gas is carbon dioxide by bubbling it through lime water. You need to be able to write a word and symbol equation. Now I'm going to test for sulphate ions. This is sodium sulphate. I'm going to start by adding a few drops of hydrochloric acid. There were no bubbles, 
so no reaction, so no positive test for carbonate ions, but we knew that. Now I'm going to add barium chloride solution. Just a few drops. Observe the white precipitate. This is barium sulfate. Here's the equation. So the positive test for sulfate ions is that a white precipitate forms when barium chloride is added. Finally, we get to the halide test. I have a sample of each solution in a separate test tube. I'm going to start by adding a couple of drops of dilute nitric acid to each one. Followed by a few drops of silver nitrate. Carefully observe what happens. In each reaction, an insoluble halide is formed. If the chloride ion is present, a white precipitate of silver chloride is formed. Here is the equation. If bromide ions are present, you get a cream precipitate, and for iodide ions, it's yellow. Use the additional resources with this video to help you write word and symbol equations for these reactions. Now that we know how to carry out flame tests and chemical tests, and know what a positive result looks like, we can use these tools to help us identify unknown substances. For example, how could we identify what ions are present in this mysterious sample? As this solution is blue, we know it must contain a copper ion. We have learned two tests we could use to confirm this. After having identified the positive ion, you would then need to work through the tests for negative ions until you get a positive result. Thanks for watching, have fun with your experiments. Inspiring your teaching and learning.